All right, this is survivor 227, refugee from Ficina. I thought it was called Ficina. Oh, whatever. I think they're good to wake. Rob, could you please cycle free animation? Confirm. <laughs> Easy there. Just let it out. You're in suspended animation for the refugee migration. Here, take this towel. There we are. Oh, don't mind the smell. The, the amniotic fluid is non-toxic. Nothing a little shower can't amend. Your colony was attacked by aberroids. The uh, climate control centre had been a little bit more damaged than we initially thought, so uh, Star Fox is performing refugee migration until the planet is more habitable. Please, try to relax. You're not in any danger. My name is Crystal. I'm a member of Star Fox. Fox McLeod? He and the, the rest of the crew are asleep. We cycle a skeleton crew drawing long legs. It'll take a few weeks to get to Corneria. So, for the time being, you're our guest. Come on, let's get you into something warmer. Huh, warmer than hypersleep onesie. I realise I probably should have left you in hypersleep for the journey, but I could sense something was troubling you. It's an ability Serenians like myself have. We uh, reach out into the cosmic ether and feel the eddies and wakes left behind by the thoughts of sentient creatures. Sometimes these manifest in ways that I feel an urge to reach out to. A Crusoean spirit once remarked I seek out reflections. I can't exactly disagree. Right. First things first, you need a bath. Oh, it's not that you're filthy. The amniotic fluid has a very hospital smell that seeps into skin and fur like, oh, no tomorrow. Recycled air is already pungently stale for me. I sense a bit of confusion. You've never been on a ship before, have you? Were you expecting a traditional shower? Water's a bit too valuable in space to use it on hygiene. So instead, we have the permeator. Just stand in the center and the plasmic aerogel membrane will pass through you. Go on. It's going to go up, so just relax. Stay still and let it work. I'll get the button. Much better. The tingling feeling will subside after a moment or two. That's just your skin getting used to being exposed without all the grime it once had. Over here. The auto garment should take care of your clothing need. Just stand there a moment and I'll uh, just hit the... Uh... There. It'll take a moment. Don't be frightened by it. When I first came up on the ship, they didn't exactly have any garments for me. Though, you'll have to forgive the machine. Its outfits tend to be a bit restrictive. Personally, I prefer something a bit looser, if I can help it. With how cold the ship gets, I suppose that's just as well, really. Well, I see the default setting is still Fox Casual. Oh, God. Come on, I'd like to talk to you in private. Take it easy. We're in no rush. 
artificial gravity takes some getting used to. Slow, even steps. Okay? The Great Fox rarely does these kinds of missions. We're more uh, used to the hustle of battle. Cargo and refugee transit is the closest thing to a vacation we get these days. Gives the chance for repairs, catch up on reading, you know, sleep. <sighs> Especially sleep. <laughs> Still, it's peaceful in a cold, artificial sense. Come in. Let's keep it down just a bit. Fox and Falco get rather perturbed if they lose on their sleep and we'll be hearing them squawk and bark all day if that happens. So, welcome to my quarters. The Great Fox is equipped with a few officers' quarters and Cloud was nice enough to give me a private space. I didn't expect the couch or the window display or the private bathroom and dining set, but I suppose he wasn't used to having someone like me on board. It was a little spartan at first, so uh, I took the liberty of dressing up the cabin. You know, a few things to make it feel more homely. Take a seat on the carpet. So, uh, I assume the situation's troubled you more than most. I sense it. You've been sending small discordant ripples out into the ether, like a violin almost imperceptibly out of tune. It's not painful but it is clear you're in need of assistance. So I thought we could help each other. You get a spiritual and telepathic cleansing and uh, I get something to do for a few hours. Just promise me you won't tell Peppy. He gets irritated when we let people out of the life pods. Something about the suspension process being expensive. All right then, let me get a glass of water and we can begin. <laughs> I'm going to do when we land is replace the water filters and get a new supply. <sighs> Which your job or <sighs> this recycled garbage does not spark joy. Before I was here, I spent a long time in the wilderness. It's not as barbaric as you might think. There's a very similitude to it. The food, the air, the water. It lacks the artificial processing that you come to expect on a starship. Mind you, the ship's not intolerable, but... I can't pretend I don't feel a desire to feel grass under my feet again. Here, I poured you a cup as well. Hydration is very important. Look at me like that. Drink up. There we go. Now, I'm going to take a seat right beside you. There we are. Now take a moment to settle in. Let the microfibers of the carpet cushion your legs. You're free to sit up straight or lie back. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's meant to be, right? It allows you to focus on clearing your mind rather than falling asleep or accidentally hypnotizing yourself. You comfortable? All right, now let's get started. With each star I find my journey home. With each adventure I travel wiser. I return balanced.
As we look up to the sky, we find the star that speaks to us. The one that we follow on our spiritual journey. We travel parallel to others we may never intersect. But they are friends all the same. The cloud runners above, the earth walkers below, the Krizoa within, and the vessels without. Rest your hand on mine, and we can stretch beyond the confines of this ship. Consider each glimmering star as a single thought, far off in the inky darkness of space, yet merely a fingertip away from being touched by our minds. The thoughts form constellations and associations, laying down the path for us all to travel. Imagine the swirling gases and stellar phenomena between them as clouds of discord we can expel from our lungs. Inhale. As we exhale, the scattered potential of thoughts is absorbed and it leaves us with vast spaces of nothing. The space that we can compress and fold and stretch further beyond what was possible. We no longer feel the carpet below us nor the cold circulated air passing through our lungs. Instead, we can reach out to other ships, other planets, sense intent, savor emotion, and soothe concern. Stretch out with your feelings. Imagine following a thread of a thought, like seeking the faint heat of another's body through the tiniest of signals from your fingertips. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Light years away, the Cornerian vessel is preparing for dinner. The chef is nervous since it is his first cooked meal out in space. But the crew is appreciating the smells over the Russian bars they once had to swallow. It's tense, but warm and comforting, despite the cold that surrounds them. A space station near Fortuna is about to undergo a surprise inspection. The crew is nervous and the commander has been less than helpful calming them all down. The emotions ebb and flow in all things. Where peace is in one, tension is in another. Even stellar phenomena can absorb the eddies of emotional strife and comfort. Let's try, search deeply. Can you feel it? An air of loneliness and hurt, a once thriving planet now desolate and abandoned. Elodard, the rings sing that one day it can be heard, yet none can hear. Many planets scarred by Andros sound like this. But perhaps I can show you one of my favorite places. Peer deeply once again. Imagine a blue nebulae 
lines stretched out for dozens of light years, some tendrils as thin as thread, and others so wide they're like oceans themselves. To the Cornerians, they call it Zone Beta, but on Soria, they call it Olocelo Expanse. The Everlove. Can you feel it? It feels as if compassion was distilled into its purest form, that it adores the life it witnesses around it, and one day it might grow strong enough to become a star bright enough to warm the galaxy. as if it hears the anxiety and fears of the universe around it and simply wishes to hold you and whisper. Emotions such as these are so very rare in Lilith. It's why I bring others here when I meditate, so that they too can witness such purity. Maybe at one point it was a star that existed long before thought itself. It ruptured in supernova and left behind just dust. And yet, this compassion, this warmth, its essence survived. And one day hopes to form again, to share its warmth and love to these new beings. What a dream to be. No kiro. Listen, feel it like a breeze. Let it carry you. Let it embody every fiber of your being. reaches far beyond the Lilith system to a place long forgotten, Serenia. <sighs> there is an absence of feeling here. This planet was once a home, but it's gone now ruptured by some calamity long forgotten. Deep in this absence, there's a hint of warmth I feel when the distant touch of its psychic energy can be felt in the expanse. Almost as if it felt its cry in the black space and reached out to offer comfort in its last moments. It all tore one day.
let's slip back to the expanse itself. I want to try something different for you. Now, I'm going to slip behind you. I'll focus on that feeling of compassion from the nebula. I'm going to gently touch the back and sides of your head to help you resonate even deeper. And there we are, utter peace. All is well, as it should be. Just soak in the comfort of the nebula, of my voice guiding you as the vibrations tickle the back of your ears. You have nothing to fear, no duties to fulfill, merely exist and soak in this brief moment in time where there are no borders, no wars, only a singular life form, us, the nebula, and all the extensions of it that we cannot see. I can feel the tensions leaking from your body, trickling away like so many tiny unpleasant dreams forgotten in the early morning. Good, very good. There's no need to think of the home you once stayed or the destination you will one day arrive. In this brief flicker of existence, we inhabit the present, utterly, totally, in time, the ship dissolves, giving way to the spiritual embodiment of you and me. Strip away the hull, the bulkheads and the engines and you can turn back towards where we reside and you can see hundreds of spirits, your fellow colonists the crew, and even the great fox itself. Much fuel was distilled from the minerals of planets that had much, much life to them. The past lives of ancestors and creatures long turned to rock and made to feed the lifeblood of these vessels, imprinting the emotional energies of the people that cherish their use. To a psychic, they could almost be seen as living themselves. We often imprint a little of ourselves onto the things we carry through our lives. The great fox feels deep pride in having rescued you and your kid. You are truly cared for. Now, we've spent much time wandering in this plane of thought. I think it's time to come home. Don't you think? The universe never left, dear friend. You merely unraveled to stretch out as far as you could. And now we weave you back whole. Perhaps one day you will learn to explore the psychic planes yourself. And when you do, you and I might see each other again in the grand journey our souls travel. But for now, wake. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. You never left the ship. We've just been sitting here quietly enjoying the moment. I can tell you're feeling a lot lighter. Your aura is significantly less tense. I know we're supposed to keep the refugees in hibernation to minimize oxygen intake, but 
let's keep this our little secret. Hmm? Well, look, you'll have to go back into stasis later, but I'll do you a small favor. You can sit with me, take a nap in my quarters for a bit as I curl up with a good book. How does that sound? All right? Good. I think this is shaping up to be a very relaxing evening. You take a bit to rest, and I'll be catching up on The Voyage on Aquas. It's a romance about two Cornerians wishing to sail around the planet of Aquas. It's interesting because there isn't really any land they can stop at, and... <laughs> I suppose you are more tired than I thought. <laughs> Sleep well, friend. Tum e fuyo tajo. Dream of paradise. Thank you.